Hello and welcome back to Mr. Meyer's Math Magic. I'm Mr. Meyer and today we are going to be looking at math in Forza Motorsport 7. Specifically, we will be looking at solving systems of equations, adding and multiplying decimals, as well as evaluating unit rates in real life. And I will have the time card of those three concepts down in the description below. So let's get started with looking at unit rates. The most common unit rate that you will hear about when you are talking about cars is miles per hour and that's how you measure the speed of a car. In other countries a lot of them will measure their speed using kilometers per hour but here we use miles per hour. So you see as I'm going around the first turn accelerating to a top speed of 215 miles per hour that means that if I were to continue at that same speed for one hour I would go 215 miles. Here as I'm reaching the end of this first straight I reach a top speed of 245 miles per hour. So as a fraction I would set that up as being 245 miles over one hour. And that is a unit rate because a unit rate is anything where you're comparing two quantities and one of them is set equal to one. So now that we're done talking about speed in terms of miles per hour, you'll see that there's a gray line that's going around in a semicircle above where it says the speed. And what that's measuring is the RPM of the engine. So that's the number of times that the camshaft inside of the engine is revolving and making a full revolution and that if it were to maintain that same speed for a minute, that would be the number of times that it would revolve in that minute. So you'll see that it's going between the numbers 8 and 9. What that means is that it's revolving between 8,000 times per minute and 9,000 times per minute. Technically, with this car that would be redlining it, and when you are actually shifting, if you're doing normal driving, like around town, you should be shifting at 3,000 RPM. While we are still looking at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see that there's a gas can icon and also four rectangles underneath it. Those four rectangles represent the tires because as you're traveling around the track, especially when you're traveling at high speeds, the tires only last a certain amount of laps. So there are a certain number of laps over an individual set of tires. So there's only a certain amount that each tire can do. And this track that we're on is the Daytona track. And that is where they do the Daytona 500 and NASCAR. And those are vehicles that are traveling between 200 and 250 miles per hour. If you were ever to see that race, you would notice that they go into the pit, that's right there on the left of the screen right now, in order to replace their tires, and they need to do that frequently because of the fact that they're traveling at such high speeds. Also, in terms of gas, you can only travel around the track a certain amount of times for every one tank of gas. Looking up to the top right, you'll see that we have our current lap speed. So that could also be considered a unit rate because there's a certain amount of seconds that it takes to travel around the track one time. So it's a certain amount of time over one. In this case, it was 39.32 over one. Next, we're going to look at solving a system of equations. And in this case, here's our system of equations. The first equation represents my car, and the second equation represents another car in the race. So when I'm solving this, I'm seeing where the two will intersect, or where my car will pass the other car. So now in order to solve a system of equations, I need to start by isolating one of the variables. And in this case, it's easiest to isolate the y in the first expression, because there's no coefficient in front of the y. Because the x is negative, I could isolate that, but then the last step would need to be a division by negative 1 from both sides in order to get that to be positive. So now when I'm isolating the y and y minus x equals 3 and 19 over 60, 
I would add x to both sides, add x, so I'd end up with the equation y is equal to 3 and 19 over 60. One quick explanation, the fraction being over 60 is because there are 60 seconds in a minute, so this is representing 19 seconds in a minute. And that's plus x. So now, because I know y is equal to 3 and 19 over 60, what I can do is I can take that and plug it in for the y of the second expression, because when I'm plugging that in, then all I'll have is one variable x, and I'll be able to solve for x. So after I plug this in, it ends up being 3 and 19 over 60 plus x. And then I take everything else that was still left in that expression, so minus 14 and 41 over 60 is equal to negative x. So now in this expression, I only have one variable, x. So I'm able to combine like terms and solve for x. So on the left side, the first terms that I would combine are the two whole numbers, so 3 and 19 over 60 and negative 14 and 41 over 60. And when I'm combining these because one is positive, one is negative, I subtract. It ends up being 11 and 22 over 60. Still have the x, so it's plus x is equal to negative x. Now I need to bring the x over to the right side by doing the opposite of minus x, plus x, which is minus x, minus x. So because I have negative x minus x, that's negative 2x. So 11 and 22 over 60 is equal to negative 2x. And then when I divide by negative 2, And this 11 was negative, just because the 14 was negative, so that kept that value. I get 5 and 41 over 60, and it's positive because a negative divided by a negative equals positive, and that's equal to x. So now that i found what x is equal to, I need to plug that in to this expression. So here I'm going to be plugging in 5 and 41 over 60, and then I'll be able to solve for y. So I'll write that right here. y is equal to 3 and 19 over 60 plus 5 and 41 over 60 because 3 plus 5 is 8, 19 plus 41 is 60, so then I have 8 and 60 over 60 for what y is equal to, so y is equal to 9. So when I have a solution for a system of equations, it should be as a set of coordinate pairs. So I have 5 and 41 over 60, comma, 9. So what this means is that at this time, so at 5 minutes and 41 seconds is when I should pass that car, and that will end up being in the ninth lap. Let's okay, see so that let's right. speed up the video to see if our calculation was correct. And we will see exactly when the next time that we intersect or pass the next car is. So right now, as I'm going around this turn, I see that right here I do cross map 541. So our calculation was correct. So the final thing that we will be looking at is doing multiplication of decimals. So if I'm averaging 39 Point five seconds per lap, how long should it take me to do 10 laps? So I'm doing 39.5 times 10, which would be 395, 
and then I divide that by 60, I get 6.58, which is 0.6 minutes, or right around 6 minutes and 40 seconds. So let's see if that's how it turns out. And right as I am crossing the finish line, it is 6 minutes and 40 seconds exact. Thank you very much for watching, and if you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you have a comment for a different game that you would like to see me play, leave a comment for that as well. And if you are not already, make sure to hit the subscribe button.